Ah. Okay, we're good. Alright, good morning. It is Monday, October 9th. We are here in Newport Beach awaiting the arrival of Vice President Mike Pence. He will be coming here to the Pelican Hill Resort to do some fundraising for local con uh, congressional candidates. Um, it's 10.24 right now. He's not expected to land until 12.30, so um, we're going to be waiting here for a little while. However, we do have some other stories that we are going to be working on. Uh, one being here in the city of LA uh, is the first official Indigenous Peoples Day after Columbus Day was decided to not be recognized as a city holiday. And so uh, we're speaking to Councilman uh, Mitch O'Farrell. He will be talking and discussing Indigenous Peoples Day about what today overall means. And also uh, a, little, a little bit about the Christopher Columbus statue that's in LA. Apparently, it's been covered up with a tarp, um, probably so it won't be vandalized today, but we will, we will be asking if there are any plans to eventually take down the statue or leave it, leave it where it is right now. Uh, so that's one story. We have some other uh, good stuff we're working on today. Tonight, uh, Jane Goodall, she has a film, a documentary called Jane, uh, which is premiering tonight at the Hollywood Bowl. And so we will uh, be trying to make it out to that tonight also. It may be fantastic to be able to talk to uh, Jane Goodall and, again, talk about her film and talk about her, her work. Jamie Lee Curtis is also expected to be there, so that's always a plus. Um, but in the meantime, we will be working on some other stories. Uh, again, waiting for Councilman Mitch O'Farrell to give us a call whenever he's ready. Okay, so we just got some breaking news in Anaheim Hills. There's a very fast wildfire moving and it has forced evacuations. Um, we are in Newport Beach. I decided that we are going to be ditching this uh, vice president um, fundraiser event just for several reasons. One, uh, the amount of people that are being evacuated is a big deal, very local story. And two, uh, honestly, Mike Pence, he probably uh, isn't going to be speaking to media. Uh, so not really great for, for us in radio because we don't have any uh, video of him uh, coming to and from. So, um, yeah, I just let the news director know that that's what my plan is to leave here and head over to uh, Anaheim to cover this. Uh, we are still waiting in the meantime to hear back from fire officials. Uh, Trying to get as much information as we can right now to relay it out to the public. But, so let's um, do that. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right, going to Anaheim Hills. So we are on our way to our fire, and do you remember all those phone calls we placed right before this uh, this fire in Anaheim Hills broke out. Well, everybody is now trying to get back in touch with me and call me, uh, which I can't really do right now uh, because I'm driving. Uh, so we are going to try to get as close to this fire as possible, try to get situated, and then if we are able to knock out a, a few quick phone interviews, we'll try to do that. But as of right now, my main priority is getting to this fire. Uh, evacuation zone and uh, talking about this we are gonna go to Yerba Park but we are just checking out this fire right here man I'm with uh, KABC Radio. Are you guys with the church? Yep. James. 
Uh, have you guys been told to evacuate? Or? We don't want to get selfish at a moment like this. It's just about our neighbors and uh, their lives, their properties, and we hope that you know God in His goodness will maybe blow the wind away from all the properties and that the fire, station, fire officers will you know, get on top of this as as the, they do, men and women. Uh, we're so thankful for them. Okay, so we just wrapped up an interview with the pastor here at uh, Kindred Community Church, and we are going to start working on our wraps. But you can't really see it right now, but maybe from this camera. But there, uh, you can see the fire over the ridge, and there's an oak tree that uh, appears that it will. Uh, looks like it will catch on fire and then that's gonna burn for a while so they're really hoping that the fire uh, blows back in the direction of the canyon away from homes and and away from the church and and the school over here Do you know where they went I don't man this is nuts it's on all side of us now I don't think they're gonna save it once they get to that oak tree I don't know how they can stop it oh my god it's really bad Ooh. Oh, that burns. There are flames right over there, right up on the other side of this building, of this school. Ah. Okay. We're good. Okay, we're back. Um, you missed a lot. The battery went dead, so I couldn't uh, record a lot of what was happening. But uh, to try to sum it up, the worst of the fire has passed by. Uh, there are still flames active flames still going on on that hillside and there are homes right above there but firefighters doing a fantastic job at least uh, creating a line so it doesn't get past that and reach those homes but it got really really close to this church and really really close uh, to these classrooms right over here uh, assuming for Sunday church or, or whatnot but the fire's still active you, we still got fire going and we actually had fire um, surround the church so we had fire coming down this hillside down here all the way around back and then we had the fire going back down that way and then coming down a hill this direction coming back in this direction fortunately uh firefighters did, did a bang up job they uh they had their water drops from helicopters going over trying to stop the spread which they did and as of right now it appears um, the main church, no damage. These classrooms, uh, no damage. The, the playground did catch fire, so uh, but that was put out. At least it's the playground and not the actual classrooms. Uh, we heard a big boom about an hour ago, and the uh, church officials, they think that it was probably a propane tank that exploded because not only do they have classrooms over here, the church over here, they also have a path or a driveway going down that direction, and they have... Um, uh, more buildings over there and this fire is really close I'm gonna get out soon and actually let's get out right now and check it out uh, see if it did damage this small building on the side <sighs> so there's that building right there It doesn't look like there's damage, but it came close, and there's still fire down there. Man. So now, experiencing this, I know what I'm gonna get at Walmart or Home Depot. Mask, goggles, um, a fire jacket. Man. Uh, there was a cat that I was trying to find for a good portion of my day, trying to find uh, didn't find the cat, but the hot spots surrounding where the cat was uh, have been put out, so no concern there anymore. Hopefully it got away. But man, this one was this one was pretty extreme. 
I've been I've been close to fires, but this one was very unpredictable just because of the wind, the wind factor. Oh. I'm covered in ash. I'm not gonna be able to wear these uh, clothes for like a week. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to wash it like three times. But man. Now, reporters uh, usually try to stay out of the way of the news. Don't try to be a part of it. Um, and so there's video of me, you know, following the pastor and and as he's putting out uh, hot spots and everything, and he's running back and forth, up and down, and I'm reporting on it. And then there was a time where I didn't see him and I saw a hot spot flaring up. Uh, so went to my car, got some water bottles, um, and started dumping water because the firefighters, their main focus was on this hillside and the church goers or the church members of, of, uh, the workers, the employees, they're all the way over there on the opposite end. And so no one saw that one popping up. So, uh, just as a human being, <laughs> how to try to do something to put it out or try to prevent it from growing or getting bigger uh, but um, what a day on the fires in Orange County it has exploded to over 2,000 acres it's burned homes prompting evacuations James Rojas is live on the scene right now with all the details James what's going on Hey, John. Hey, Jillian. So, yeah, so this fire is called the Canyon Fire 2, and just like a sequel to a movie, it's come back to this area with a vengeance. Uh, this fire that started around 10 o'clock this morning has grown to around 5,000 acres. More than 1,000 homes have been evacuated, and at least six of them have been destroyed. And I'm here at a church at Kindred Community Church in Anaheim that was in the immediate path of this fire. And I've been out here for the majority of the day, and it became very scary at times black smoke blotting out the sun with flames being fueled by strong winds and dry brush creeping closer and closer to the church uh, firefighters however did a fantastic job stopping the flames literally feet away from the church buildings but also doing a great job today uh, was Pastor Philip DeCourcy, who was out here with other members of the church with buckets of water and hoses running from one end of the property to the other, taking care of hot spots that were firing up and flaring up uh, all around here. And the pastor is joining me right here. Um, pastor, uh, can you go over again what, what was your initial, um, uh, I guess, emotions when you learned the fire was creeping this way? Thanks, James. Uh, nice to join you, uh, John and Jillian. Yeah, I mean, James and John and Jillian, uh, I mean, anxiety. I mean, we, we faced this several years ago when we had the uh, Green River fires. You said this is kind of Canyon Fire number two. And, and so you're just anxious. But we got here and the fire, the police led us through. We worked alongside the fire brigade and made sure we didn't get in our way, but did what we could uh, just to lend a helping hand and uh, directed the fire services to where the hydrants are, and where there's some access to water. And so uh, from our perspective, we're deeply thankful to God. I think we have dodged a bullet. We've saved um, the, the, the uh, structures on the property. We've certainly, literally, although your audience can't see this, um, the, the hills around us are just black. I mean, it's like a scene out of Vietnam where everything's been napalmed. I mean, that, that's a horrible image, but that's kind of what it looks like you can hear in the background the rumble of the fire 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 truck but um deeply thankful and right now we're probably maybe uh, past the worst of it watch out for spot fires but we're thinking about our neighbors there's hill uh, houses all around us on the hills here so uh, john and jillian we're just uh you know now we're praying for our neighbors and praying that mm -hmm. uh, there'll be no loss of life and uh, the least amount of damage no question. And 10 people, by the way, have been killed in the fires in Northern oh, California wow. in Napa oh, because when the wind picks up and the wind up there is blowing pretty hard, sometimes between 40 and 50 mile per hour gusts, uh, yep. those fires can just take on a life of their own. What's the wind situation like in Anaheim right now? 
Yeah, well, that's tragic to hear that loss of life. No, you, you, you're, you're spot on, John. Um, we watched the, It's died down right now, but earlier on, we were getting gusts of, as James said, 40 and 50 miles an hour. And by the way, I want to give a shout out to James. He's been with us, and I know he's been covering the story, but uh, he, he uh, threw in with us on some of the small uh, spot fires, and we're thankful for him. I witnessed with my own eyes over to the kind of... Um, uh, northwest, uh, par- northeast part of our property. There were se- several spot fires, John, on the hills. All of a sudden, with the pickup of the wind, they just seemed to join and become this wall of fire and came down uh, the hill uh, to the uh, kind of um, southeast of, of the property. And I'm telling you, to my eye, they were traveling 40, 50 miles an hour. In fact, it reminded me, I had a friend who was a jumper with the fire services here in California, and he told me one day in a private conversation he when the wind gets behind some of these fires they can literally travel up a hill at, the, at 50 and 60 miles an hour so it's kind of terrifying thankfully we do have some trenches around the property thankfully the the fire service um put their uh, trucks and their personnel at very strategic points and you know nipped it as it got within probably 20 30 feet there was a couple of times uh, john jillian were I saw them just get, you know, uh, you know, covered in clouds of smoke. And at that point, I'm going, hey, maybe it's time to get off the property. But, you know, the wind would blow the smoke away and they had emerged and they had, you know, just fought the fire, um, you know, 20, 30 feet from, from some of our structures. So, you know, big shout out to these guys and girls. Um, they're, they're the best. Well, thanks so much for giving us your eyes and ears on the ground. We so appreciate it and stay yes, safe out there. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll come you back to James. All right. Thank you.